E3 day number two is in the bag. What did we see today? What did we play? And what did we think? What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Gabe is obviously here right next to me, and we're bringing you coverage from the second day of the show floor. We went back to the Nintendo booth, and we got some more hands-on time with Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. We played Overcooked 2. We played Dragon Ball Fighters on Switch. We got to play some Monster Hunter Ultimate Generations on Switch. We got to play some Mega Man 11. It was a pretty Switch-heavy day, as we saw a lot, and got to sort of redigest our thoughts from the past day, the past games, the direct, and here we are, one day to go. What are our thoughts after Wednesday? Where do you think we should start here? Because we did a lot. Let's go with my personal pick, Overcooked 2. <laughs> I love that game. They have added new recipes and new foods. And even though it sounds like a simple addition, it means the world. Because before we were just making burgers mm -hmm. and soups, and I'm so done with burgers and soups. <laughs> Remember, all I can cook is what's in Overcooked. So now they've added pancakes, yeah. sushi, and we got to play some early levels, 1-2 and 1-4, as well as 3-2. 3-2 had teleporters and dissolving <laughs> staircases. Me and Jake were having a heck of a time. Yeah, I saw you and uh, Jake have a little bit of trouble with that one. Uh, that, I, it was a tough stage. Yeah, the teleporter thing like kind of threw me for a loop. I'm like, what is happening? Because... You know, I don't play Overcooked as often as you guys, or I just haven't spent enough time, but it still looks so fun. I wanted to get my hands on it. Uh, it, it seems like it's a worthy sequel, and honestly, I just want to find someone to play it, because I don't have a brother to play games the way you do. I mean, I do, but he doesn't play games. I need I need to find an Overcooked partner so I can get in on this fun. You got two months. August is right around the corner, and luckily that one's coming out pretty soon. The pre-orders are up right now. Physically, it's $40. I don't know if it'll be a little bit cheaper digitally. That's sort of how it worked. Uh, with Overcooked 1, but it's traditional Overcooked with new twists, new tweaks, many more recipes, and they do such a good job of finding ways to make it obnoxiously challenging, but in like the best way, right? So like they'll consciously put the knife like blocks, the chopping blocks over here just to, just out of reach. Yeah. And you're like, gosh, level designer, what are you doing? Why did you put that there? But then it creates these crazy antics, these chaotic scenarios, and me and Jake, we were already bickering. Yeah, it's almost like they did it on purpose. But that's what they want. Like that's where the fun comes. You're like, no, like, grab the freaking steak. No, what do you mean you didn't chop the lettuce? Like it. Yeah. I don't know. Like there's a certain joy because once you've done it, it's all high fives. It's all happiness. Yeah. It's, it's the best. So we played Matt. Um, I guess we'll touch Smash Ultimate. So today we found out that the game is being called a brand new game. They are saying it's being built from the ground up. They talked about their view of Smash Brothers, not really as sequels. Um, so I, I guess yeah, it's a. Build from the ground up. That's we'll go with that. I think that's sort of a good, fair way to put it. Yeah, even in the video that we posted, like people are gonna believe what they're gonna believe. They're gonna say what they're gonna say. Nintendo's stance is pretty clear. Like, hey, we are doing a lot here, and uh, it's a fighting game, right? It, fighting games are by nature iterative. Mm. Uh, and the way I likened it was like Street Fighter, right? Like right. A, a Street Fighter game where Ryu isn't having his move set like a Hadouken, a Shoryuken. Like he's gonna be doing his move set because that's his move set. And yeah, it'll look like visually different. And this one maybe looks a little like similar to the Wii U version, I guess. But there's very, still yeah, very but there's similar. still like a lot of changes and, and the stages that are being updated. You know, every character. I, I, I'm happy with it. I, I, I'm that ship has sailed on me. I don't. I'm I, not I guess to me, the big thing is the sort of the way that they structure the game in terms of modes and how that all works. Yeah, that did change from iteration to iteration. As far as we know, it's not changing. It could. I hope there's more additions. That's just what I'm waiting for. If they can just add some new characters, tweak some things a little bit, but hey, that's what they're calling it. We heard that today. Um, and we played another couple matches. I guess like Golden Ridley, still really like him. We had an inkling brawl where we had three different inklings. Yeah. All just like spraying ink of different colors. It got a little chaotic and crazy. You were green and I was yellow. And I don't know if it was a stage you're playing. I was like, wait, where, where am I? Because like you can cover each other. And so yeah. like, you were covering me in green. I was covering you in yellow. I was like, who is yellow? Who is green? That was a lot of fun. Um, and confirmation of um, the resolution and frame rate. Uh, 720p handheld, uh, as expected. 1080p docked, both 60 FPS. Yeah. So that's good. It, it looks great. It plays great. Again, we had a ton of fun. Um, and that three player fight where it was like Ridley, Ice Climbers, and. Who's Jake on that one? I know. I was like. Uh, oh, oh, he was Pokemon Trainer. He was the girl Pokemon Trainer. Yes. Female yes. Pokemon Trainer. That was like a really epic battle, especially because when like, really in charge, I would duke it out. And then all of a sudden he switched to Squirtle, and I was like. It's so pure me. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was a great time. Um, we also got to check out Mega Man 11, which, it's awesome. I loved it. It's I, I so it hard, though. Like, I, it felt more... We just got done playing Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2. Yeah. This feels 
notably more difficult. I don't know that it's more difficult. I think it's just that we're not as familiar with the systems, right? Maybe. You know, slowing down time and using the, the, the what was the ability, the dual thing that they have on the other button? The, the gear system, so you yes, have the, the, yeah, like the yeah. charge shots, the extra like, power, like and the slowing of time. Using that, and I'm not used to that stuff. You're not used to that stuff. So even what was the other like charge thing? Where you hit the, the triggers. So, oh, the, there's like an overcharge. Yeah, there's an over. That's when you're low on health. Yeah. yeah. So that stuff completely new to me. You do I, have to use a lot. Like it is. I got through the entire level up to the boss without even knowing about most of it. Like, I didn't know that you could slow down time until Jake told me like when he saw I was a good three fourths of the way th- to the boss in, in the stage. So. I'm sure the stage would have been easier if I, if I had used the slowing down time and things like that. But I think that's why it was more difficult. We're, we're not used to it quite yet. I think if we get used to it, it it's going to still be difficult. It's not an easy game by any means, but I feel like it'll be more on par with what we know. Uh, I don't know. Personally, I felt it was, it was more challenging. Um, you are required to balance more systems. You are you need to use that, that slowing of time. You need to use those extra powered shots. There are enemies that have small windows that you need to hit. Um, there are enemies that are moving at speeds that, that dodging becomes... Very difficult. Um, there was a lot of platforming. Uh, I got to play Blockman, and you played Fuse Man. Mm-hmm. Um, it was also interesting that they had two mini bosses. Uh, I think in both yeah, stages. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I think yeah, I don't know. Like when you were saying you got up to the, the boss, do you mean the mini boss? No, I meant like I mean, oh, Fuse, Fuse Man. Yeah. Okay. I mean because the mini bosses were so cool too. Um, in the Fuse Man stage, there was this like giant little robot with like sunglasses, mm-hmm. or I don't know about not I don't know about sunglasses. Sunglasses. You had to shoot him there, and that's the only place he would take damage. Um, even a little bit further in that same level, there was just like this like bigger uh, enemy robot that would like hover around. But then when you could just like skip, uh, skip completely, you could just like go. But yeah, getting to Fuse Man was a tall task, and you know, sadly, I did not get to beat Fuse Man. Uh, the t- demo time ran out on me, but I- I- I'm super excited for this. Yeah, they did have some hitbox issues. I will say there were some platforming problems where like it Mega Man should have been jumping through gaps and he wasn't. Um, both Jake and I ran into those on separate kiosks, separate plays of Blockman stage. Um, but it, it looks really good. It controls really well outside of those hitbox issues. And uh, I, I'm really excited for it. It's October 2nd. It's coming to Switch. Obviously, it'll be on other platforms. But it's going to be a really good time. And they have multiple difficulties. They recommended we turn it down. We didn't want to do that. We just played on the, the normal difficulty because there's like... Be newcomer, casual, and then normal. Yeah, and above normal, there's another one, but you have to unlock that one. Right, so we just played on normal, which is the, the highest ability that they had. It was a trip. and Music, fantastic. Yeah. It feels like a Mega Man game. I was worried a little bit, right, just because the visual style is not what we're used to. But they modernized it in a fantastic way. Even just, just you know, having the ability to, to call in, what's, what's the dog's name in, in Mega Rush. Man? Rush. Yeah, you can call in Rush and get to certain areas that are otherwise unattainable because you can't jump high enough. Super, super good time. And I, I'm surprised because I, I was legit worried. Like, hey, this is, I don't know, Mighty Number no. 9. I had nothing to do with this game. But that game kind of soured me like on the genre for a little while just because it tried to reinvent it to modern times and, and try to make it a little bit quicker and things like that. This feels way quicker to me. But still, Mega Man, it, it's it's awesome. Yeah, they they're doing new things, and there are some, I guess, just small differences in terms of like, okay, when you get hit, how the knockback works, and you kind of get stunned, and you kind of get pushed back at times when you're firing off a charged, uh, like the supercharge when you're in the gear, uh, the double gear system. Uh, so getting used to that, maybe that's part of it. We just played a lot of Mega Man, and so like you're accustomed to how where he's gonna jump, how he's gonna move. The boss. Blockman was super cool because midway through he transforms into a giant robot who was twice as hard as regular. I was like, oh, I'm doing pretty good, Blockman. We're going to get this taken down, taken care of, first try. And then he transformed into a huge block monster. And yeah, I, he just, it was over mm-hmm. for me and Mega Man. But that one's definitely one to watch for. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters, we played on Switch. We played the Pro Controller, so it was docked. It basically felt like Dragon Ball Fighters. There wasn't any, I didn't feel like there was any issue controlled fine it looked fine it played good yeah I, it didn't look quite as good but really yeah i don't think it looked quite as good as the other platforms but that's to be expected it still looked really good like don't get me wrong it still dragon ball fighters if you like dragon ball fighters on anything else you're gonna like it here um i defeated you zach took you down the not, way not my game the way it's meant to be um yeah I, I still think it's really fun and i i think that this is a special game because like i, I said this before the fans have willed this thing into existence by going out and supporting uh, Xenoverse 2. I always get this confused. But yeah, I- I'm glad this is uh, coming. And uh, I had a fun time playing it. Yeah, I-, I thought it looked great. I wish we could have played it handheld to see how it played and-, and looked and performed there. That's sort of 
to me like the, the test of a lot of these games is how they how they run when you're moving around. Um, but we also have to play some Monster Hunter. Coming from Monster Hunter World, that is a very weird transition. I think fans of Monster Hunter from yesteryear are going to be happy with this. If you've only played World, this feels like a weird retroactive step. Mm -hmm. I wasn't the biggest fan because World is my... That's what I know of Monster Hunter. And this is... You know, they straight up said, hey, this is Monster Hunter from the handheld era. So it's it's not going to be the same as World, obviously. It is Double Cross. It's cool that it's coming to Switch. I'm not sure I'm going to spend much time with it just because my mind is wired that World is how Monster Hunter should be. I know that's not the case. I know it's a very long and loved franchise. It's not for me. People's minds are made up as far as this goes. The game's yeah. been out in Japan for some time. The game was available on 3DS for some time before mm -hmm. that. This isn't anything new. So um, I, I think people know now whether they're going to get this or not. I, I don't think that anyone is like confused about whether they're going to like this or not. So, yeah, the fact that World was, like, so amazing and brought in so many new people, including you and I, who never really mm. messed with Monster Hunter very much, um, I think that speaks to where Monster Hunter is going, and maybe the next iteration, or a future Switch-exclusive iteration, right. could do some really cool stuff, but like you said, this one probably isn't for us, just because we're new to these, these games, and... We don't have the experience that everybody else does, but like I said, Double Cross being out in Japan for some time now, now it's being localized, and that's fantastic, so mm. you, you know if you want to play it. Coming soon, Overcooked coming soon. I wish Dragon Ball Fighters had a date. Uh, yeah. Mega Man October, that's not that far off. Smash, it's odd that Smash ends up being the one that is the farthest mm -hmm. off. Uh, so yeah, we got to play quite a bit again, and it seems like people are loving Smash. We spoke to a bunch of fans, by the way, if you came up and said hi, thank you so much. It's always such a pleasure and so fun. Everyone seems to be liking Smash. We, we met a fan who had never played Smash before, and yeah. he was saying how like some of these characters like aren't familiar to him at all, and so it's so cool because to him it's like a, a brand new game. And I do wonder, you know, for the brand new player, that has to be an awesome feeling of like, oh my gosh, all of these characters, like huge <laughs> roster, so many options, so much variety. I, I think that's got to be just like a is it a awesome great, or is oh, it? Yeah. Is it intimidating, though? Just, no. You, it, you have so many characters. But Smash is, is, I think, much more welcoming and easier to get into than, like, yeah. oh, gosh, I'm, I'm playing a... It's the latest Guilty Gear, and there's, you know, 70 characters in that or whatever. Yeah. Talking, you know, that, that would be a different story. But here, I think it's just so cool. Like, okay, you walk around, you see these games. Oh, they're in it, they're in it, they're in it, they're yeah. in it. And we got some more time at the booth to see all of the oversized weapons. Like, it made me question, is the Smash World humongous? Because they have gigantic <laughs> Captain Falcon helmet. They have gigantic Bayonetta uh, gun shoes. They have gigantic... The Golden Hammer is absolutely massive. Yeah. And Mario's hat is like as wide as us. Donkey Kong's tie is the size of... Me. Red, oh, yeah. yeah that. <laughs> super freaking cool. Super fun. Um, it's a limited show in terms of what Nintendo Switch has. I, I think that's fair to say just in terms of pure quantity Everything we played, though, is really good. And, and one thing I, I read that, that was a really great point is that Nintendo has done this for some time now where they show a limited number of titles, but they regularly update and they regularly keep fans informed via directs and via presentations. But when they do show, the games are so polished. They are so ready to go. We had experience this week at other publishers, other games that are running rugged, are not up to par yet. And there's nothing wrong with showing something early, but Nintendo's methodology of making sure it's good to go and then discussing. They talked about with Metroid Prime 4 uh, that they don't want to show something if it's not ready. Yoshi getting pushed. They don't want to you know, put that out if they don't feel that it's ready. Obviously, whatever Retro's working on, not ready. Yeah. So it's a bummer from the standpoint of like, hey, we really want more. I would, I would have fully expected there to be more on the floor. More I, titles. Mario Party's a, the weird omission, right? Because it's coming this year, so... Smash is playable. That's December. Mm -hmm. Mario Party is before then. And maybe it's even like a messaging thing of how they want to very like manage this in terms of they don't want to detract. If they, okay, they've got like this huge thing about, oh, bringing all these characters into Smash. So mm -hmm. like, oh, then a bunch of ads for Mario Party. Maybe they feel it's distracting. I don't know. But I guess it's more to say they have a plan and at least their plan delivers 9.9 .9 times out of 10 very quality titles. Like, I, I think we know that they're all going to be good. And so it's a bummer that we didn't get a Pikmin, Yoshi's MIA, Metroid MIA. But when they do come out, and similarly with Fire Emblem Three Houses, I wish we had more than that. Very few details. 
Um, I wish there was more because I want to know a lot about that game. There is quite a buzz around uh, Damon X Machina. I've seen a lot of love for that uh, mm-hmm. from like sort of a fan perspective, a social media perspective. Would like to play that as well, but it's not here. Um, so tomorrow uh, we have a few more things that we're going to check out and obviously we'll keep you posted. We do have a lot more footage. We haven't really had a chance to talk Starlink yet. Uh, so that, I think we'll save that for tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Because that one, as a teaser, impressed both of us. Me being bad at the game impressed you. That's God. another teaser. That was... <laughs> ooh, we'll have to talk about that one. Uh, we're going to go play the Octo Expansion, and so we'll probably discuss that tomorrow as well. But let us know if you have any questions for the last day of E3. Again, everything you played has been pretty darn good. Save for, I guess, uh, Team Sonic Racing did not like that. <laughs> Otherwise, Mega Man is hard... As nails and super fun, Smash is still golden. What's harder, Mega Man or scaring me? They're not gonna get the joke. There was a haunted house at the Capcom booth, just throwing in something a little fun. And uh... <laughs> thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hope you're in a great E3. Make mm-hmm. sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from the Switch. We got you covered on the new games and more to come in the week ahead. Mario Tennis Ace is soon as well, so stay tuned for that. Thanks again. Have a fantastic day. Follow us on Twitter and Discord. Links in the description below. And until next time, myself and Gabe, Switch Force out.